We were ready to lose students in planned bandits bombardment, says Kaduna State Governor Nasir El Rufai. While sponsors of campaigns against President Muhammad Buhari have been warned to desist. And can tackling poverty and illiteracy solve the problem of insecurity in Nigeria? Well, this is Plus Politics, and I am Mariana Cole. On the rescue of the abducted Afaka students uh, for Kaduna State, Governor Nasser El Rufai said the plan was to attack and kill bandits, even if it meant some students would die in the process. El Rufai said in Kaduna that the state is at war and collateral damage was a price he was willing to pay instead of ransom. And still, in the issue of security, uh, the I stand with Buhari hashtag group has threatened to name the sponsors of violent campaigns to bring down President Muhammad Buhari's administration and cause an ethnic war. Well, the group gave the sponsors a month of grace to desist from their activities or be exposed. Well, joining us to discuss this is Anne Kilbriggs and Mr. Celestin Akbobri. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having Thank me. Thank you for having me. All right, great. I I'm going to start with you. Um, Ms. Briggs, there's been a lot of talk about insecurity as to what needs to be done. Even the government has talked tough at some point. I remember when the government came out to say they were going to bombard the bandits, they were going to do everything in their power to bring them to their knees. And months down the line, we're here again with the kidnappings not reducing, people being killed every other day. And now, of course, Kaduna State is more, more like a hotbed of kidnapping university students. And let's not forget, the Greenfield students are still there. But then this group comes out to say that they are going to expose, more like a threat. And they're giving an ultimatum of one month for those who are trying to bring down Mr. President's government to desist. Uh, I, I'm trying to understand why we always come up with these threat messages or you know, say that we are going to you know, expose these people. Just like Governor Masawale also came out at some point and said to us that if he told us who the sponsors of these bandits were, we would be shocked. Well, shock us by bringing out the names of these people. Why do we always have to hear this? Is this, a, uh, is this some form of um, tactic to take our attention away from the most important thing? Or are they, do they really have anything to offer us? Well, as far as... Um I am concerned. Um, it is always um, a, a tactic to uh, distract Nigerians from the reality of um, what Nigerians face in um, in Nigeria. Um, if you if you know anybody, two people, ten people, one person that is responsible or knows somebody who is responsible or is involved in what Nigeria um, have endured uh, since 2015 and even further back. I think uh, it's about time we are told these truths instead of uh, threats. I don't understand threatening and uh, giving an ultimatum for four weeks while people are being kidnapped, while uh, unknown gunmen, we went from Boko Haram to uh, headmen to bandits. Um, uh, now we're in, uh, at the stage of unknown gunmen. We have people roaming around uh, the northern parts of Nigeria. We thought, at least I have said, that uh, if people think that this thing will not cross over to the Niger Delta, that they are fooling themselves. Well, from what we're hearing now, uh, students were kidnapped in Adia State, uh, I think a day or two ago. So basically, um, in, in my opinion, I would say that if you know who these people are, mention who they are. And if you don't know, then keep quiet so that Nigerians can find a way, um, a way out of this. People should stop playing politics with, um, with, uh, with what we are facing. For El Rufai to say that he is prepared uh, for collateral damage, I am horrified 
but not surprised. I mean, are his children going to be part of this collateral uh, damage that he is, uh, he is considering? And here the M5, if we remember, um, had said when he first came to power as a governor that uh, he had been paying um, he had been paying the people who were killing people in uh, in southern Kaduna is the same Erufai that also uh, called on Jonathan to resign when the Chibok girls were um, were kidnapped um, in uh, in Jonathan's tenure. You know, so the, be, these people should stop playing politics with the lives of um, of Nigerians and let's get down to the nitty gritty of what is happening in uh, in Nigeria. This is unbelievable. This is just unbelievable. Mr. Bobbery, let me come to you and I'm going to throw the same question to you. There's been a lot of soft landing under this administration. People voted for Mr. President and the Vice President because they promised that they were going to be tough on insecurity. They were going to be tough when it comes to fighting corruption. They promised that there was going to be employment, but let's leave that aside. Let's talk about the issue of insecurity. I remember when they were talking about fighting corruption and they were saying those who stole or looted from our coffers would be given a slap on their wrist if only they would return the monies quietly. So why is there always a, there's, why is there always room for soft landing? Especially when it has to do with things that are uh, that negate our laws, why do we have to give room for that soft landing? Especially now that we're talking about people who are kidnapping and killing. I'd like to remind you that some of these students who were in custody had been killed. Should we be giving soft landing to whoever we think is behind this? Well, I think that um, it is sad. It is very, very sad that we are. Uh, talking about a government that swore to protect life and property of citizens and our territorial integrity, telling us our name, our name. We don't want to know. We don't want to hear that you will name. That is not your duty. Your duty is to protect me, to protect other Nigerians, to protect our properties, to protect our children in school. If a government come out to say, I know, I will talk then the government had, had lost grip. Because, you know, it's, it, the, 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 the essence of having uh, the DSS and several other uh, security apparatus of government is to gather intelligence report that citizens should not know about and to wake up in the morning, ABC had been arrested and so so thing found on them that they were trying to do this and do that. We don't want to know, as at best, the government is playing politics with um, the lives of our citizens, because as far as I know, it does not take anything to destroy or kill this so-called uh, Boko Haram, bandit, bandit men, men, whatever that they answer. They are not hidden. Uh, Sheikh Gumi met with them. Several people have been meeting with them. So, I mean, uh, they should, the government should do the needful. I want to hear that uh, 100 bandits were on a mission to kidnap people and that uh, security agents of Nigeria uh, caught on and got, and got them uh, arrested or killed. That is what I want to hear. So, at best, government should stop, please, playing politics with lives of innocent Nigerians. Um, Anchor Briggs, now the, some of the pe some people who uh, were talking about the situation in the country, pundits and critics have said that maybe the government needs to get more vigilantes to deal with the situation, you know, creating more vigilante organizations, um, recruiting more and more people to aid um, the police and of course the joint tax force in these areas where kidnapping and banditry um, is, you know, holding sway. But how, how good would the idea of, and I'm not against it, by the way, I'm just saying these bandits are armed with sophisticated weapons. These are people that are very, very well armed. And, you know, a vigilante might not necessarily be allowed to carry a gun. So what good does this do? They are not only very well armed, they are well trained. And they are not only well-armed and well-trained by, uh, by all accounts. Um, 
if you watch war movies and stuff like that, you will see how well trained uh, these uh, uh, these so-called um, bandits are. They are terrorists. They will, what's the meaning of bandits? These are terrorists, and they've been around uh, and in Nigeria for uh, going to a decade now. So the uh, the reality is that um, in in terms of the uh, uh, the numbers of policemen or soldiers that should be in a country, going by statistics of the UN, um, already Nigeria is falling behind in terms of how many policemen do we have uh, uh, per local government, how many policemen do we have per state, and so on and so forth. Now, you're talking about um, uh, vigilante. Vigilante, um, in, in, in normal circumstances and situations, are things that ordinarily people do for themselves if you live in an estate, if you live on a street. These are things that people get themselves involved with to give themselves extra security. Now, when we say vigilante, are we saying, the government should be very clear, are we saying that Nigerians and states and local government areas and communities like uh, maybe in my community, in Abonima, uh, maybe in, uh, in my local government area, Kukutoru, are we allowed, we should be permitted, the law permits us to protect ourselves. The law is, we expect the, uh, the government to protect us. They swore to protect us. Now, they have failed and failed woefully. Now, we have a right to protect ourselves. So now, are we saying that we want to take that responsibility on. That should be up to the people. I believe that every community by now should have, um, should be organizing themselves because already the threat is already here. I'm talking from the Niger Delta angle. The threat is already in the Niger Delta. It is already in River State. It is in our communities. The, the, the people, the strangers we're talking about, they're in our communities. Uh, there is also this idea that uh, the, uh, the the identity uh, registration program is also being used to uh, to uh, to register foreigners that are not Nigerians but are coming into Nigeria, how, and they are in every I mean, local government that, under the pretext or under the claim that every Nigerian but that is not has factual. A, where did where did you get this information from? Come on. Where did you get this information from? The NIN is only for Nigerians. I have a colleague who's from Ghana. He wasn't allowed to register. He's a foreigner. So I, I don't believe that that's true. I mean, we need to well, see, I, we I, need to see I, the facts. I believe that it is true because anything is possible in Nigeria. It's a threat. And I believe that uh, the people that, that, that do use these things to, um, uh, for their own purposes and their own political reasons it is possible that they do it, and I believe it. Now, it is up to the government. It is the responsibility of the government to add a sway, to allay the fears of Nigerians. I'm a Nigerian. I'm from Niger Delta. I'm from River State. I have a right to feel what I'm feeling, and I feel that there is a process where the, the, uh, the identification registration process is being used to uh, to, uh, to bring Niger non-Nigerians into Nigeria and identify them as Nigerians for political reasons and premeditated reasons. This is my concern. Now, if I am wrong, the government has owes me a responsibility to prove to me that I am wrong. This is my concern. And so it, it, it is the responsibility of government. This is where we are today in Nigeria where we have a government that does not tell us the truth and therefore we may we assess our own truth as we go along okay. and take a responsibility for uh, uh, for what we believe okay let me go back to celestina quabri um let's say examine um governor el rufai's statement about you know wanting to bombard these bandits but then um, you know, they were going to have, of course, these, some of these students to, to sacrifice. But before we do that, um, the governor did not just stop at saying that this was the tactic or the strategy that they had in place. He went on to say that before they could finish planning, they, they, the bandits got wind of it and they moved to another location. 
So let's talk about the issue of moles. I mean, we're trying to deal with insecurity in the country, but there seems to be information leaking from strategy sessions to these people. And I'm not in any way also not, um, saying that sacrificing children, because of course, you have the parents of these children on the other hand, uh, whose shoes you would want to put yourselves in. But even if there were to be a strategy session uh, for security reasons, um, the government wanted to take a position, how do you win that war against banditry, Boko Haram, if we continually have information being leaked, even from government house? Does this mean that maybe we're not necessarily ready to fight insecurity, or um, we need to plug holes first before we start? Well, I think I've always said that um, it is difficult to wake up a man who is pretending to sleep. You know, you can, you can easily wake up somebody who is sleeping. You just tap the person and the person wakes up. But to wake up a man who is pretending to sleep, I think the Nigerian elites, those that are struggling for political power and those that are in charge, I think they are pretending to sleep on this issue of security. It's not that they don't know what to do. They know exactly what to do. Uh, 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 and, and that's why you are hearing this. But um, the statement from Aerofy is, I was disappointed when I heard that, that America will do anything for even a corpse, a dead corpse of an American, to get the corpse of an American. They'll do anything. And this man opened his mouth, a governor who swore to protect life and property to say that he, he was willing to trade. Come on. Even a, a drunk a drunk card will not say that. I think um, we are in a society where people have conscience. This man should resign the next morning because spontaneously in the 36th state of this country, people should be on the street. We are talking about, I mean, come on. That he was willing. No, 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 no. Not from a governor who should be there protecting life. He is the chief security officer of Kaduna State. Where was he when the bandit came? to take the students. It was his responsibility to protect them. So he failed in his duty. And he is now even saying that he was willing to sacrifice. It's, it's either there is something that these people in government are not telling us. I think they are using the blood of Nigerians to service their gods. Oh their gods oh, that, that's take ridiculous. blood. I think that is the only explanation. That's, that's the only explanation you can give to a governor who is supposed to protect me telling me that you were willing to sacrifice me. Come on. People spend money to send their children in school. And you stay in the comfort of the government house to make that kind of statement. That's an insult on the integrity of Nigerians. I say, oh, it means that we want nothing in their eyes. Hmm. Anchor Briggs, you at some point when the Niger Delta militancy was a thing and it, it was, you know, troubling uh, the security of this country, you seem to be um, part of the people who were negotiating. You were the go more like a go-between, um, you know, for the people and the federal government at the time. Now, let's look at the situation of things right now. Uh, I've spoken with several people on this issue, and nobody's able to put a finger as to why there's a lot of foot dragging when it comes to um, dealing with this issue head on. Uh, there is, I'd like to, and I'm not in any way trying to insinuate anything, but let's take a, a look at what happened in Emo State and how we saw a bombardment and how the army came down with all its might. Let's also talk about, you know, when we protested here in Lagos and in other places, we saw the might of the government. Why is it so difficult for our government, the same government, to do the same when it comes to the issue of banditry? Let's not even talk about Boko Haram, these bandits and these kidnappers. Why is it so difficult to come down heavily on them? What's the, responsible for the foot dragging? Um, first of all, the, uh, the Niger Delta issue was not will never be, has never been a, the equivalent of what is going on in, the, uh, in Nigeria now. It started off in the, in the northern part of Nigeria. It is different. Now, whether it is Boko Haram, whether it is headsmen, whether it is unknown uh, bandits, whether it is unknown gunmen, they are all one and the same people. They are after the same thing. Boko Haram. Boko Haram says that it is against Western education. 
And so uh, the attack now is on the institution of Western education. So that's very clear. There is no, um, there is no politics in this, as far as I'm concerned. It, it should be very clear to the politician. This is the reality. Now, when you look at um, uh, the issue of headsmen, <clears throat> the claim of um, land and no land and, and what the British government uh, uh, kept for them or didn't keep for them. I, 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 I mean, the, the reality for us in Nigeria today is that we find ourselves in a situation with a government that is unable and unwilling, unable and unwilling, unwilling and unable to do something about the disaster that has befallen um, Nigeria as a country. Uh, therefore, um, the, uh, uh, the fact that we have governors, we have politicians that are pretending that these things are not as bad as they are and that it is being politicized. And how can anybody in their right mind, and I don't care where that person is from, say that when people like me speak or any other person speaks against what the government is unable to do, that that means that the person is against Buhari. No, it is not about Buhari. It is, is it about Buhari? It's not about Buhari. It's about the people of Nigeria, the 36 states, the over 300 or so ethnic nationalities. When the Ogoni people under Ken Sarawiwa and other leadership got up and spoke about injustice, they were killed, they were slaughtered. The Ken Sarawiwa was killed. When um, Yoruba speak, they are arrested. When Igbo speak, they are arrested. And then you have people who keep telling us every day that they go from Boko Haram to bandits to, uh, to, uh, to headsmen and now unknown gunmen. Now, it, it means that everybody who can ferment trouble in Nigeria can now be identified as unknown. Hmm. As unknown, everybody that can carry a gun is unknown. He, 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 the, uh, the governor himself has said it, that he, he had a meeting, obviously, in his office, and yet uh, the, uh, the content of the meeting was leaked, according to him. That's why they couldn't do what they wanted to do. And the same thing applies to the federal government of Nigeria. The federal government of Nigeria, by the, its behavior and the way it carries on, has shown very clearly that it doesn't really care about the lives of Nigeria. Forget about property. It is even people who are alive that are talking about property. Okay. We're talking about parents. I'm a mother of four. My brother Celestine here is a father. I mean, are you telling me that, it, that the, as a parent that anybody can hear what Elufai said and not be offended by what he said, that he was prepared for other people's children to be sacrificed? And then you see people, these are the sort of people that are in power to govern uh, Nigeria. It really is such a shame. There is nothing like resign. I mean, we now know in Nigeria, the word calling on anybody to resign, they won't resign because they okay. think they think that they are there by their own selves. If not, look at all the things they said during Jonathan's, uh, Jonathan's government. Well, we, 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 can't, we, can't, we, can't go, we can't go into that. We're almost out of time. So let me quickly just give Mr. Akwabari just a few lines. Um, we had Sheikh Gumi on our breakfast show today on Plus TV Africa. And he made a recommendation as to how to deal with this situation. I know a lot of people don't like Sheikh Gumi, but I just want to bounce this off you, Mr. Kwabari. He did say that maybe we can have a ministry of nomadic affairs, that this might somewhat uh, deal with the issue of gunmen or uh, this, you know, issue of herdsmen clashing with farmers. Uh, yesterday on Plus TV also, we talked about Ogoni women who are unable to go to their farms anymore because herders and their, you know, their cows have been destroying their farm, uh, you know, their farm produce. Um, if we do have a Ministry of Nomadic Affairs, what good will it do for us? In closing. I think it is, laugh it is, it is laughable to, to, to say that. 
Because we have Ministry of Education. Do we have education? We have Ministry of Power. They debate budget. They present and debate budget and pass and share the money. Do you have that? Normal dick. Somebody carrying stick and one carry gun. I mean, I think that is a huge joke taken too far. Um, we should not even go there. If, if, if the national security architecture cannot deal with arms men, with S men, with Boko Haram, with these killers, is this uh, nomadic, or do they carry gun in the ministry? We are talking about people that are very sophisticated. Have you seen them move in that convo? More than 100 eloxes, wet, armed with, 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 with multi purpose gun mounted on it. Have you seen these are, these are people are coming from from Libya from different they are well trained and you are I think we are joking with with uh, security in this country. Well, on that note, I want to say thank you to you, Mr. Celeste Nepobri, Anka Briggs. Very interesting conversation. Thank you for being part of it. Thank you for having me. All right, we'll take a short break. Thank you for staying with us. When we return, we'll be discussing the solution to insecurity in Nigeria, as suggested by Olawakbo Hashim. Thank you.